The famous story of Romeo and Juliet starts in Verona, Italy. In this setting, there are two families, the Capulets and the Montagues, who hold a nasty rivalry filled with violence. Their feuds have been causing the rest of the city many problems, but there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. Samson and Gregory, two servants of the Capulet house, are badmouthing the Montague family. While the two Capulets make sexually insulting remarks about the women of the Montague house, Gregory actually manages to spot out two Montagues, one of them being Abram. This triggers some tension in the streets. Samson does something very unique here. He bites his thumb in front of Abram, which in this story is considered a huge insult. Ha! Huh. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Oh. Is the law of our side if I say I? No. No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I bite my thumb, sir. Abram and Samson continue to get worked up comparing whose master is better until Samson dares the Montagues to pull out their swords if they are men. Suddenly, Benvolio, another Montague member, jumps into the scene and tries to get the fight to come to an end. But suddenly, Tybalt, another member of the Capulet house, makes his entrance. What art thou drawn among these heartless hides? Turn thee, Benvolio, look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword, or manage it to part these men with me. What? Drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell. All Montagues and thee have at thee, coward. Down with the Capulets! Down with the Montagues! What noise is this? Give me my long sword. Oh. A crutch, a crutch! Why call you for a sword? Thou villain Capulet, hold me not. Let me go. Thou shall not stir one foot to seek a foe. With all the commotion, Prince Aeschylus arrives to the scene. Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, you men, you beasts. On pain of torture, from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground. And hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, bred on airy word, by thee, old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. If you ever disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. The prince successfully breaks up the brawl, but only by threatening to kill anyone who is caught breaking the peace. He exits the scene to have a word with Capulet, leaving only Montague, Lady Montague, and Benvolio in the scene. Benvolio explains how the fight started to his uncle, Montague. Lady Montague asks Benvolio if he's seen Romeo, her son. Apparently, early that morning, Benvolio saw Romeo sulking around near the west end of the city. Montague comments on how his son has been seen there, crying, many times, and only when the sun comes up does he return home to get away from the daylight. Suddenly, they spot Romeo wandering around, and so Benvolio asks his uncle and aunt to give him some space so that he can try to find out what's been causing Romeo's recent negative behavior. Oh, good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? Ah, uh, I me, sad hours seem long. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Romeo says that he's been depressed lately because he has been having some love problems. Noticing some blood on the ground, he even attempts to say that love must be the reason for the fight that just erupted. And when Benvolio breaks up into tears because of how sad Romeo is, Romeo tries to blame Benvolio's sadness on love as well. Romeo goes on for a bit longer, describing what love is in a beautiful but heartbreaking poem. <sighs> love is a smoke raised with a fume of sighs. Being purged, a fire sparkling in lovers' eyes. Being vexed, a sea nourished with loving tears. What is it else? 
a madness most discreet, a choking gall and a preserving sweet. But Benvolio needs to know who Romeo loves so much. And according to Romeo, it's a girl who's decided to stay a virgin forever and will not be hit with Cupid's arrow. So Benvolio does what any good friend or cousin would do and tells Romeo to forget about this girl. After all, there are so many other pretty girls out there. But Romeo says that looking at other girls will only remind him of the one that he's truly in love with, Rosaline. As the scene comes to an end, Benvolio promises that he'll show Romeo how to forget about his unrequited love. <laughs>